welcome. Lord, everybody. Welcome to Arrows of Deliverance and Faith Ministries. This is our Strength for the Journey Bible Study. Yes. You are welcome at this time to, to get God. you a piece of paper. You are welcome to get you a pen. Come on, let's write these scriptures down. Let's write down the notes or whatever that God is speaking to you tonight concerning your relationship, concerning your marriage, concerning your life. What I love about God is God does not leave us where we are. He doesn't leave us to our own devices. God steps in the middle. He draws us. He draws us with that love, that kindness. God wants us to have a healthy life. He wants us to have a prosperous life. And guess what? He wants us to have a healthy marriage. He wants us to have a prosperous marriage. So God is not sitting there waiting on you to get everything together so he can put you out on front street. No, 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 no. God is saying, now now i can use you now yes with that mindset yes with that heart like that yes because you never know who you can step into someone else's life and help them at that very set time and that very set season amen amen, amen. so we're gonna go ahead and say a, a quick word of prayer you can go ahead and tag yourself just let us know you're watching with us tonight amen amen father god in the name of jesus we thank you god we thank you for this particular day we thank you lord for this hour we thank you for this moment we thank you for what you are about to tell us lord jesus because we know that you have nothing but good thoughts about us we know that your thoughts are peace and not of evil we know that you have an expected end for us we know that you draw us with your love and your kindness we know that you're sitting down god looking upon us god and smiling oh god you want the best for us oh god you want us to prosper oh god you want us to move forward oh god you don't like us being stuck and we thank you god we thank you we thank you for that mercy we thank you for that grace we thank you for that kindness we thank you for that love and we thank you tonight god for your touch touching us again reviving us again redirecting us again resetting us again god we bless your name tonight you are welcome you're welcome in our homes you're welcome in our marriages you're welcome in our lives you're welcome on us live you're welcome to have your way we you're welcome to do what you do best which is be god in each and every last one of our lives not just today but every day for the rest of our lives we give you praise we give you honor we give you glory it's in jesus name that jesus we pray name. amen 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 i'm gonna go ahead and hand it to the pastor but before i do i would like we're talking tonight about expectations expectations and we have those expect expectations a lot and we're gonna dig deep tonight about that but i want to say this before i give it over to the pastor the quality of our expectations determines the quality of our actions the quality of our expectations determine the quality of our action. That's good. Yeah, that's real good, ain't that's it? That's good, first lady. Come on, Pastor. But before we move further, ladies and gentlemen, the grass withereth. Yes. The flower fadeth, but the word of our God, <laughs> glory to God, shall stand forever. We thank God for you on tonight. Amen. I like what you just said, first lady, because the quality of our expectation does indeed determine our action. So the question then becomes on tonight, do we place unrealistic expectations upon our spouse? As we stated before we came on the live, I see you smiling at me, hallelujah. But oftentimes, <laughs> beloved, what First Lady and I were talking about before we came on tonight is oftentimes what we tend to do is moving into a new relationship, a new marriage, and the new union that God has blessed us with. We place un uh realistic expectations upon our spouse upon the one that we're in relationship with and the question then becomes do we understand that this creates feelings of anxiety they create feelings of sadness and then if, if we allow that sadness to set in because we do not choose to deal with what it is uh we have been expecting that has not taken place or manifested and matriculated within the marriage unit mm -hmm. then it turns into despair and and once despair sets in, then it goes down a place and down an avenue which we don't want it to go. Yeah. And Jesus said clearly in the word of God that he hates divorce. Yeah. And so I want to just start out the gate. We want to start out just letting everybody know that once we have uh, set to be in relationship in the sight of God, 
the only thing that should separate us, we talked about this on last week, we talked from the subject conflict resolution. And so what we have to understand as it relates to uh, expectations, when they become unrealistic, they will move us into a place of separation, yeah. whether it be mentally, whether it be physically, well, whatever the case might be. And this is a place that we don't want us uh, as it relates to our relationship to be. Yeah, I believe God is not for divorces or separations. Absolutely. I don't think God wants us to separate. God doesn't want us divorced. He don't even want us sitting around arguing. Because if you think about it, he throw words like malice and, and contention and, 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 and strife. Yeah. He don't want us to live in that type of world. He wants us to live peaceably. The scripture says as much that lies within you to live peaceably with all men, especially the person that you land in the bed with. Yes. Don't pack up and go in the next room. I mean, I don't think there's anything on this earth, and this is just how I feel, that we can't get through together. Amen. But we got to get past those expectations, those unrealistic expectations. Mm -hmm. So my first point would be general. What expectations? Because it's a lot of different expectations that's out there. So one of them is a general expectation. I should generally have an expectation that where a general is common. Common. So what are some of the expectations we might have in a relationship, in a marital relationship? One would say, I expect you to talk to me with respect. Thank you God. expect your spouse to talk to you with respect. One would be, I expect you to work. I expect you to go out there and work. I don't expect you to bombard me. And sometimes what we do in, with that expectation, sometimes one person might marry and then they don't, they decide, well, because I'm married, I, I shouldn't have to work. And a lot of times we skip over the part of we need to go to counseling before we even think or imagine to even join ourselves together. That counselor is going to walk us through the expectations. Well, what do you think it is? What is marriage for you? Or what is marriage That's for you? And most of the time, Pastor, what we normally do is we normally do things the way our parents when we talked about unlearning that but we normally do things and we run things the way our parent taught us so one of those things is i expect you to work another one is i expect you to cook clean help out around the house you know some people have those expectations and whatever happens or whatever you guys decide for your marital relationship that's your marriage don't look across the street and say well he do all the cooking he do all the cleaning and he do all the working that's their marriage, and that's what their expectations are for that. I got one more point, Pastor. I'm going to pass it over to you, I think, too. Uh, expect to keep me in mind as you go about your day. You know, a lot of times, the, and good. we're talking about a general expectation. Right, that's that's just a general expectation. Yeah. I'm expecting you to call me. I'm expecting you to text me. I don't expect you to go out to work. You leave out for work at 7 o'clock in the morning. I'm expecting you to pick the phone up when I call. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't expect you to go to work at 7 o'clock and then you don't call me at all. You don't text me all day long. And then some women are saying, I expect you to help me with the children. Or some men say the same thing. I know a lot of fathers that do everything and a wife doesn't do anything. And they were like, I expect that. So those are just, just examples general. of general expectations. Because we're going to get into the unrealistic. Yeah. But general general expectations those are just a couple things that i jotted down as general yeah i wanted to go back to something that you said that i believe is very important that most people don't do when they embark on the marriage relationship mm -hmm. and that is seek marital counseling mm -hmm. uh and so I, I believe that's important because as it relates to expectations as we're talking about um oftentimes when we enter the marriage that we have what we have learned, what we've seen, whether it be in um, uh, our, with our parents or those that we know, oftentimes watch this is what we've seen on TV, and then we bring it into the relationship that we're now in, and then when we don't see it matriculating or happening within our relationship, then we have a disdain within us and resentment then. Uh, rises within us and it can tend to ruin the relationship yeah. because our expectation is based upon what we have seen and I like what you said 
it's important for us. I don't know who's watching us on tonight or who will watch us on a later day. If you are endeavoring to be uh, married with an individual, it's very important that you seek godly counsel. The word of God tells us that in the multitude of counselors, there's safety. Mm -hmm. the, the word of God says, Jesus said that, that to acknowledge him, not in some of our ways, but in all of our ways. And he would direct us in the path that he would have us to go. And so as it relates to marriage, we need to understand that it is one of the most important important decisions that we will ever make in life mm -hmm. next to receiving the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Yeah. And so it's important for us to understand who are we getting involved with? Yeah. <laughs> what is their family like? Mm -hmm. Because we're not just marrying the individual, we're marrying the family. That takes me to my next point. My next point would be specific expectations mm -hmm. that's what you get out of counseling that's what you sit down and you talk about how many children would you like to have do you want to have children at all because it doesn't make sense to join a marital relationship you don't want children and i do you understand what i'm yeah. saying that's going to be a horrible marriage Somewhere because you gonna you're going to be you're going to be pressuring that individual into having children and that individual don't want children at all there is no convincing that person they just don't yeah. want it so that's that's that specific expectation specifically what are you looking for i remember when you and i first got together and we was just walking down the path of just dating each other i remember you asked what are your expectations and I remember <laughs> responding saying, what are you talking about? And then I remember mm -hmm. after you asked me the second time, I said, well, I'm expecting you to be the man that God said for you to be right. in the Bible. Yeah. Because a lot of times you, you might have an expectation of something that's like we said before, unrealistic and we're not there yet. Mm -hmm. I might have something that's unrealistic in my mind of what marriage is supposed to be or what marriage looks like for me. So, I went back to well, whatever God says he wants you to do because God had a specific thought in mind yeah. when he created each and every last one of us. And we I gave that talk. scripture. Yeah. That scripture says before you were formed in your mother's womb, God knew Kimberly was going to be married. Mm -hmm. Before you were formed in your mother's womb, God knew I was going to be a business owner. God knew I was going to have children. God knew all about me before I was even formed. He fashioned me to be a certain type of individual. He was intimately acquainted. With Absolutely. You. And so once we know that, we know that about God. We know that God has thoughts about us. We know that God has a plan of, of, for us. We should get him involved. Absolutely. Amen. I want to give you this other little quote that I had and I'm going to pass it over to you. Expectations are dangerous when they're too high and uninformed. Mm -hmm. If those expectations are extremely high and I did not inform you, that's going to be a dangerous thing right there, Pastor. Absolutely. Absolutely. I like that. And, so it, you know, that kind of ties into what the Lord placed upon my heart. And many of times what people don't realize is some of the unrealistic beliefs and expectations that they have placed upon their mate, not just with men, but women as well. Yes. Uh, one could be that your spouse should complete you. Yeah. Now, that's very, very dangerous. Why? I like what Neil Daniel, Donald Walsh said, and he said that the purpose of a relationship is not to have another who might complete you, mm -hmm. but to have another with whom you might share your completeness. Mm -hmm. And so what we have to realize is we do not get married to or for the other individual to bring completeness to us. But I have to enter into relationship knowing who I am first and foremost and that I am complete. In other words, whenever we embark upon a relationship, we have to see ourselves as an asset and not a liability. And oftentimes we look at the other individual to see what they have to bring to me. Mm -hmm. But we have to change and kind of flip the script. What do we have to bring to the relationship? We have, I talk to women all the time. You talk to them as well. And the women say, okay, well, pastor, I haven't found a man. A man has not found me. But the question has become, are you ready for the man to find you? For he that findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtaineth favor from the Lord. But what do you have to present to the man when he does come knocking at your door saying, I choose you? What do you have to bring an asset to the man? Right. And or are we just looking for the man to bring an asset to us and vice versa? Yeah. Am I making sense? Yeah. You're into my, ex my specific 
expectations. You and that's why I was like, yeah, because one of my specific expectations will be, I expect you to take care of yourself. Mm-hmm. I expect you to, t- and I'm not saying you per, per se, because everybody know he runs. Because you know I'm going to take care of myself. He, <laughs> he runs around taking care of himself. I want to keep first looking at me, y'all. But I'm not even <laughs> talking about the exercise part. I want you to take care of yourself health wise. I want I want you to make sure you're going to the doctor. I want to make sure you're eating right. That's a specific expectation. And I, I think that as a, uh, a individual that's um, going into a marriage relationship, an individual that's married, I can have those specific expectations that you're going to take care of yourself. You're going to take care of your hygiene. You're going to go to the doctor uh, that you're not going to have no uh, life changing medical issues because you're not taking care of yourself. You don't care about what you eat. You don't care about exercising and you don't have to go out and build your body or like lifting weights and stuff. Get, get on the cardio machine, but you take care of yourself. But I said that to say this because you jog this part of the taking care of yourself. Are you going to read books? Are you going to pick up the Bible? Are you going to develop a relationship with God? Are you going to keep a relationship with God? Am I going to be an individual that I'm here and then you're, you're, you're made as dumbfounded mm. when it comes down to mm. growing your mind? Yeah. You know, a mind is a terrible thing to waste. It's a disservice to marry an individual and that individual is, is reading books and that individual is self-help and that individual is, is eating right and, and taking care of itself, is going to the doctor and all that kind of stuff and you just eating whatever you want to eat. You're watching the soaps when you should be reading and you're not taking care of your mind. You're not taking care of your body. You're not taking care of your soul. You're not taking care of your spirit. I'm expecting you. That's a good specific expectation for a spouse to have for their mate. I think what I like about what you said, First Lady, I think that what's important in marriage is is this, and this is what I love about our marriage and um, our union that we have in the sight of God, is that we're ever evolving. And the problems that I find, and even uh, counseling people uh, in marriages in our own church, is that oftentimes what we tend to forget is that one of the most important aspects is that we often look at this is one of the unrealistic expectations that we place upon uh, our spouses and it's that that your spouse will never change but we have to understand that your spouse as well as you ought to ever be increasing in the knowledge of first and foremost God mm. Why? Because God is the one who instituted the marriage unit. And so as saved people, our endeavor should always be to grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as we endeavor to do that, especially being leaders, I don't know who we're talking to, who's watching us on tonight, but especially if you call yourself a leader, I always say, how can you lead if you do not read? Yes. And so what I love about First Lady and myself, we're always evolving. Listen, I don't want to be with somebody that's not shifting. So Somebody that's net not able to be fluid. Somebody that's not able to be flexible. Somebody that's not able to evolve and, and go against the grain and yes. be able to grow in grace and to read, to involve themselves, like you just said, First Lady, spiritually, mentally, physically, and emotionally, and financially, not just in some area, but in every aspect of our life because God is a, a moving God. Yes. And so, in essence, what we ought to be doing is constantly growing so that we can begin, begin to bring a new level to the relationship show up show up show up in the relationship what apostle ward said boss up <laughs> boss up boss up <laughs> but show up and, and the, be who god has called you to world, be as the world said the world says this come through yeah. but, but it's it's not about a coming through it's about showing up in that marriage yeah. uh, the one of my expectations is ex- i expect you to do right by me Expecting you to do right by me is not just giving me your paycheck yeah. or, or coming home and doing right by me is what you just said. You showing up in the marital relationship, you're reading, you're taking care of yourself, you're taking care of the children because it's not always the wife's responsibility in that. Mm-hmm. It's not always the husband's responsibility in that. But collectively, together, yeah. Yeah. we're doing this thing together. Yeah. And we if we're in this marital relationship, if we walk in and we doing the counseling thing, we're making sure that we're crossing those T's and dotting those I's as far as getting that third party involved. Because guess what? Sometimes, majority of the times, most of the times, we misunderstand our spouse because we have no idea what they're talking about. And we, we're taking it from our thought. 
-hmm. Like we might be in a conversation. I might have said something one way. Now you got offended because you think I said something another way. And this is one thing that I wanted to put out there when you just said that this is the first thing that came to my mind. Trust me, it's a, st it's a, st it's a statistic. statistic. There you go. I got tongue tied. <laughs> it's a st statistic. Um, but I didn't look it up. But I heard it a couple times that every seven years you change yeah. from what you normally do. So what you normally like. What you normally watch on, have you ever noticed that? What you normally would watch on TV or what you would normally eat or how you would normally do something. It says every seven years yeah. that we shift. I got to be prepared for when he shifts. He has to be prepared for when I shift. Especially when I'm cooking for him. And then all of a sudden, I know you used to like this. Now all of a sudden, I don't like that no more. And then he'll say something like, I ain't never liked that. What? <laughs> you did use it like that. You used to cook it all the time. Yeah. But... But I have to have that expectation it's that flexible. as we get older yeah. that things are going to change. Yeah. You, you're you not as I'm going to say this. I'm going to jab this in there as you move on to your next point. You're not here to fill my voice. The Bible said the two become one. Mm -hmm. So God is shaving off of me and shaving off of him. And he's shaping me. He's shaping him. He's making me. He's molding me. He's making him molding him. And then he's, he's wielding us together. He's binding us together. But God never said he's supposed to fill both voids or holes that's in me. God's the filter of the void. God will fill that void. God will fill that hole. God will heal that situation and make it new. He can't heal me. He's just walking alongside me as God is healing me and delivering me and changing me and shaping me and making me and molding me. But he's not supposed to take the place of God. And I think we get that expectation. It's all the way out there because we expect that's an unrealistic expectation yeah. for you to step into my life. And now you have made me whole. And God never said he was going to make me whole. Right. God said we will have oneness. God never said he'll make me complete. You know, people say stuff like that all the time. You complete me. No, no. God completes us. We are that threefold cord. God completes us. It's him and I and God. That's the completion. Yeah. So you and I, we become oneness. And that's my first thing that I put on here. Oneness. I'm going I'm to read the scripture to make sure we know that's oneness. And I'm going to give it to you, Pastor. I know you're looking at me. And that's Genesis, the second chapter, the 24th verse. It says, therefore shall a man, and we heard this time and time again, shall leave his father and his mother and cleave. God is doing the cleaving to us unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. We're one flesh. Absolutely. What I think that is uh, one of the most trying aspects of relationship and marriage is, like you said, First Lady, um, we look at unrealistic, unrealistic expectations that we place upon our spouse. And I like what you said. Uh, what we have to understand, beloved, is that, you know, I have a mindset and I'm not saying that you should embrace it. I pray that you do. But we have to have the mindset of being uncomfortable with being uncomfortable. Mm. In other words, you look at the relationship. This is what I, the word of God ought to govern our thoughts. It ought to govern our thoughts because as you said, behavior characteristics in the beginning of the lesson on tonight, our thoughts dictate and predicate how we act and how we move forward. And so therefore my mindset always says, what did Jesus do? How did Jesus respond? And Jesus took the wounds, he took the hurts, he took the pains, he took the rejection, he took the disappointment, he took everything that he ought not to have taken, and the very first thing he said was, Father, forgive them, for they know that what they know not what they do. What am I saying? In a marital relationship, we have to understand that we are different individuals. Yes. You are a woman, I am a man. So therefore, the two becoming one means what? I have to be uncomfortable with what makes me uncomfortable. How and why? Because you are different. But because of the love that I have first for Jesus, that I stood in his sight and said, I love you. I take this woman. She is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. That means I embrace the difference. And this is what I think is the problem in many marriages. We look at the individual, other individual 
and the people look at the individual and what they don't like and they want to change what they don't like instead of walking with the individual with what they don't like, helping them get past and get through what they don't like, trusting that God is going to bring the oneness in the midst of what they don't like. It's the compromise. Am I making sense? Perfect. It's the compromise. That's what true the true essence of love is. True love, listen, I'm in the book. It covers what? A multitude of faults. So what we tend to do, and then I'm going to give it back to you because I hear you coming in. What we tend to do is we want to point out this. We want to point out that. I don't like this. You said this. Well, wait, 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 wait a minute. So how do we grow the common ground? Because there's going to automatically, as we said on last week, there's going to automatically be some issues that irritate us about ourselves. But I like one quote that I read and what the individual said was that which irritates us about others is usually, watch this beloved, an indication of what we should be looking at within ourselves. Yeah. But see, here's the thing, Pastor. What One of the things that we we keep forgetting is this is a person that we joined ourselves to for the rest of our lives whom God has joined together when we should ultimately be looking at God's expectations. Mm -hmm. You know, we're supposed to be taking God's expectations, God's desires and incorporating, incorporating them into our lives because we are supposed to ultimately have the expectations of God, our expectations are supposed to come from God. So when our expectations come from God, then we're supposed to do things God's way. Mm -hmm. But before I get off into doing things God's way, when I fell in love with you, when you fell in love with your spouse, when you fell in love with your mate, when you fell in love with the relationship that you in, when you fell in love, you were willing to compromise then. You are willing to say, okay, you have the last piece of but chicken. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I like the way you said that. You said when you fell in love with me. So just stay I ain't right say there. you. I want to stay right there, y'all. Come on, stay right there. You, you compromised and gave the last piece of chicken. You compromised and gave the last piece of cake. You compromised how you did things. You changed your schedule. When you to fell be, in love with me. When you you changed your schedule. Y'all forgive me, didn't To I? be on the phone. You changed your schedule to text. You changed your schedule to go on dates. You changed your schedule to be mindful of this individual yeah. and now that we're in relationship now we got some years under our belt now we're walking why can't what happened to the compromise what happened to your expectations me even looking at what you were expecting yeah. me even considering what you was expecting what happened to that mm -hmm. because life happens but we cannot allow life to take us off the path that we're supposed to be on and stay on. When we stand before God and we say to death, do us part. He said, let no man put us under. We talked about that. And that's including you. Right. And you. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and you too. But the word asunder means to separate. Right. So God is saying, let no man, including myself, including you, including your children, including your in-laws, your mother-in-law, your brother-in-law, your, 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 your nephew-in-law, whomever, your mother, your father, I'm, I'm saying you, I'm talking about myself, your siblings, your best friend, nobody is supposed to step into this marital relationship and separate us. This is what God is saying. This is his expectations. Mm -hmm. So we're supposed to be walking down the path of his expectations. And how do we do that? How do we know what God expectations are for our lives? We got to look it up. We got to get in the Bible. We have to read because if we do not read, we will not grow. If you don't read nothing else, and I'm not going to say you're not going to read nothing else, but get into Ephesians, the fifth chapter. Read that. It's read good. James. Search the scriptures in the Bible about being a husband, about being a wife. Don't look up all the husband scriptures, wives, and be like, you supposed to do this, you supposed to do that. But look, up, but look at the scriptures for yourself. Yeah. Meditate on them for yourself because ultimately don't you want to be the best expression of yourself? Don't you want to be the best husband you can be? Don't you want to be the best wife you can be? Don't you want to be the best person? The best person that God has sent. This is the person I thought about. And I remember saying this as I pass it back over to you, Pastor. 
I remember telling God this, God, I want to be that woman that you said before I was formed in my mother's womb. I knew you. I want to be her. One year, I think it was like 2007, God told me, I want you to be the person that I designed. He didn't say person. He said the wife. I want you to be the wife I designed and created for you to be regardless. So God has said regardless if the husband shows up. Regardless if this is happening the way you want it to happen, the way you thought or expected for it to happen, God has said, I want you to be the person that I designed and created for you to be regardless. God doesn't have a but. God doesn't have an if. He didn't say if your husband did this. He didn't say if your wife did that. God said, I want you to be this. I want you to be that. Period. Period. Come on, Pastor. Amen. I think Pastor. For me, one of the things that, and I like what you said, you mentioned that word compromise. And we often talk about that. We often counsel folk when it comes to marital relationships. And we say, you know, where did the compromise come in? Last week we talked about growing a common ground. This is how I look at it. When it comes to unrealistic expectations or expectations in the marital relationship in general, as well as specific, I think that we have to look at it from a sp uh, the standpoint of a, a spiritual perspective. And I think that as we've been talking about, even in our Monday night Zoom class, dealing with the psychological warfare and how the enemy comes to pervert the thoughts of God, the pervert the thoughts that we're thinking that would bring peace to uh, our reality, whether it's relationship or any entity, what we have to look for is the opportunity. Mm -hmm. And so instead of looking for the compromise, this is what pastor says. I look at it as an opportunity in the midst of my unmet expectations. Yes. And this is why my spiritual perspective, and I believe all of our spiritual perspective, what has to happen? It has to transcend our human, which is a limited perspective, and move towards uh, the perspective of God. And in other words, when things seem to be in the marital relationship upside down, when all hell seems to be broken loose within the marital relationship, can we look at it through the lens of the Holy Ghost and look at the opportunity that we have within it to grow, mm -hmm. to grow in God, mm -hmm. to grow with one another, mm -hmm. to see where I need to humble myself, men, to accept and submit to my wife and not just expect my wife to submit to me the bible says we ought to submit therefore one to another as we do unto god so that we can see how god is growing us in our relationship with him and one another and so in other words regardless to what's going wrong within our marital relationship there's an opportunity for us to grow and so in essence what it does is it brings us to a sense of and this is what i put in my notes in my meditation before we came out tonight is we have to as married to married individuals and more importantly as saints of god God is always trying to develop within the, the mind of the child of God a sense of spiritual awareness that must be continually builded. In other words, as marital people, as marriage uh, people that are married in the sight of God, it's important for us, watch this, it's important for us to take a deeper look into how our expectations stack up to our reality and how our mood is affected because of it. In other words, some healthy ways to start moving forward in how we build the awareness of how I'm responding to what I don't like and what I expected. So that I can grow in God, as we just said, and in my relationship with you and my spouse is as what Anthony Robbins said. Watch this. He said, do what you did in the beginning of the relationship and there won't be an end. Wow. Let me add to that. Am that's I making a, sense That's to a you? huge wow. But let me let me add to that. Show it's up. opportunity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Show up in, in the way that you show up for image, show up for your marriage exactly the way you show no 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 listen the way you show up for image show up for your marriage meaning you know how you get your hair done or you cut your hair my husband spent a lot of time in being bald okay he spent a lot of time <laughs> in being bald 
He has to have the right shaving. She ain't lying, he yo. has to have the right razor. He has to have the right shaving cream. He has to have the right. He does this straight razor thing with his face. He spends a lot of time in being yes. bald. Him image, right? He spent a lot of time in ironing his clothes. He has to have starch. Then he has to go behind a starch with some spray water or whatever. I don't do none of that. She's okay? telling the truth. He has to earn everything. Even when he's going to work out, he want to earn his workout. I'm saying it, I'm breaking it down like that to say it this way. The way we show up in image, women, we have to get our hair done. We have to have that makeup. We have to have our nails done. We have to have our toes done. We have to have the right outfit. Yeah. If it don't look right, we're going back. We're changing this. We're changing that. The way we show up in image, how we want to personally look, yeah. if we would show up like that in our marriage, if I take care of you how I take care of myself, or you take care of me how you take care of yourself, that's, it. that's a whole nother. And let me tell you, I told you before, that's the scripture that God told us to do, right? He the expectations of marriage that God has for us. The expectations of marriage is this. God told the woman to respect him. God told the man to love her. This is married people, right? Mm -hmm. God said, respect him. And God said, love her. And I have those scriptures. We can read those scriptures. But if we would do what God said, and it just seems like the very thing that God told us to do is the hardest thing or the most challenging thing that comes to our, our mind. Because the first thing we think about is he didn't do this. Well, God, you told him to love me. So since he's not showing up in love, then I don't have respect for him. But God didn't give us an if clause. Yeah. He didn't tell us if. He didn't say, but he didn't cancel out one thing or the other. God gave us a correct, uh, a direct command saying, respect him. Yeah. God gave us a direct command and say, love her. So we live our lives under the expectations of God. If we show up like we show up in our image, show up in how we, what the scripture says, the plaiting of the hair and the adornment of you putting on and the jewelry that you put on. Or like the Bible said for the man, if you washing your car, you shaving yourself, if you show up for her, if we show up for him, life would be a whole lot different. Life would be a whole lot better. Marriage would be a whole lot better. And as you just said, it, it won't end. It will not end. Mother Teresa said, watch this, beloved, on tonight. If you forget anything that we said tonight, I don't want you to forget this. What First Lady just said is so poignant and it's paramount to the mar marital relationship. And Mother Teresa said it like this. She said, intense love does not measure, it just gives. Mm. I'm going to say that again. Intense love does not measure, it just gives. And so this is why for myself, what I endeavor to do in the midst of unmet expectation, in the midst of frustration, in the midst of depression, in the midst of what we don't like that our spouse is doing, what I tend to do is look at the love that God intensely and immensely showed and had towards us. The Bible says that he suffered, he bled, and we know he went to Golgotha. He went to Calvary for us, and he just gave himself. He became a ransom for us to redeem us out of the hand of the enemy. And then he's given us the, uh, the, the understanding of understanding that our marital relationship is a type of shadow of our relationship with God. Husbands, love your wife as Christ so loved the church. What did he do? He gave himself for it. He died on the cross. How many know that none of us can do this literally, but he gives us the model, which is why we have to stay in the word of God. We have to stay in prayer so that we can put our God, our wife first. What does that mean? She becomes first. Her needs come first. Her desires come first. Her wants become first. If I want to rub myself down, I got to rub her down first as the man. That's the word of God. Am I right? Why? Because intense love does not measure. I cannot look at what she's not given me. I can't look at what's, I, what's, I feel is uh, being unmet in my life coming from my wife. It just gives. If I say I love, if you love, then the intense love that you have for your spouse, ladies and gentlemen, you would just give. And if you do it as First Lady said, in the sight of God, in relation to your relationship with God, how many know that you'll get God's results? pastor we suffer we suffer because of the interactions that we have with our expectations we didn't know we had and sometimes I, I, I it challenge us I employ us I encourage us sit down and get to know you get to know the the person that sh that's showing up in this marital relationship 
get to know the individual that's putting on these unrealistic expectations and we haven't even scratched the surface i don't know if pastor's gonna have us come back next week and do this but we haven't even scratched the surface because we're gonna drill this thing in we have to have healthy marriages in 2022 we have to have healthy relationships we have to show up in our marital relationship we cannot have these unrealistic expectations not any longer it's time for us to be who god called and created for us to be because i'm gonna tell you right now it's nothing but a distraction those unhealthy expectations are nothing but a distraction distracting you from being the powerful couple that god intended for you to be in this earth for you to show up yeah. as they say in the yeah. world show up show up Balsa. and be who god called and Let created for you to be you victorious. the marriage that god wanted you to have the relationship god wanted you to have the example because god is all about examples the example god wanted for each and every last one of us to have in this world we're supposed to be his representation That's right. a marriage couple is the representation how god loved the church how he gave himself for the church and guess what we have to have that reciprocity we have to give one to another amen amen, amen. I'm, I'm i'm uh what's the word i want to say i'm committed i'm committed to be submitted in jesus name i love it i'm committed say that drop it in the comment section come on i'm committed i'm committed to be submitted to be submitted in jesus name in jesus name beloved on tonight i feel the holy ghost leading me to tell somebody this tonight that you are we are ministers of reconciliation yes that which first lady you said it earlier that which god has brought together let no man put asunder that's including you and your husband there might be disappointment there might be frustration there might be something that has been unmet in your relationship right now but a threefold cord the word of god says shall not be easily be broken i know it's tough right now but you get with your spouse and y'all get together in prayer y'all come together in a level of communication so that you can understand each other ask god to help you to like one another oh, y'all didn't like me right there we have to pray and ask god to show us how to not just love our spouse show me how to like my spouse show me how to be understanding toward my spouse show me how to love my spouse god the way you have expressed your yes. love toward us and god will bring reconciliation to that which is trying to bring separa yes. separation to where you are you don't have to give the enemy the victory over your marriage tell the devil that he is a liar and stand with god and stand with your spouse yes. and fight. let god be glorified if you fight you'll yes. win fight. it's easy for us to give him and throw in the towel yes. and god said if you do that it's because of the hardness of your heart yes. let the devil know that he's defeated and we shall not be hallelujah separated in jesus mighty name yes, yes. god gives us a whole book and it's the book of Hosea and it's a book designed to show us that you can make the decision to walk away from your spouse because of the expectation that has been unmet in your marriage the expectation that has you frustrated the expectation that has you disappointed but you can do like God commanded Hosea he said go and get your spouse yes, and fight even as he came and got us look at yourself as you look at your spouse and when you get frustrated look at the frustration that god had when we walked away from him yes, 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 yes. and he still yet came toward us he redeemed us he died for us hallelujah let the devil know he is defeated thank be unto God yes. who always causes always, us to triumph always. through Christ Jesus beloved yes. we just come tonight to let you know that the marriage unit it has to stand strong it has to stand strong within the family our communities are being destroyed because of what's going on in the household yes young people are going astray men are going to prison on drugs hallelujah young women are having babies out of wedlock because of the the marriage structure that's not the way god designed for it to be and it's time for the church to stand up and show god that he's god show this world that we are going to do the will of god hallelujah and that's to glorify him your marriage is a relationship and a type and shadow of your relationship with god amen amen it's supposed to be me and you against the world it's no no it's not supposed to no, be no, no, no. it's us against the world i know it is for us amen. but i'm saying for you and as your well spouse, as you it's supposed to be you and your spouse against the world together y'all can fight anything together. 
Together y'all can do anything together. Together y'all can move mountains together. It's something about that husband and that wife. When they connect together, y'all can shift everything. Come on, Pastor. God, I bless you. My God. In My Jesus, God. Mighty Hallelujah. Name. Jesus. No weapon formed against you shall yes. be able to prosper. And every tongue that rises against you in judgment is already condemned. Beloved, if you operate in the spirit of Christ and you stand in principle, you'll see the results that God said belongs to you already. Walk with your spouse as God has walked with you. Even when we walked astray, when we walked away from him, he was still headed in our direction. We don't have to be prodigal with our spouse. Turn back around. Turn, back around. Turn, back around. Turn, Turn back your face toward your spouse. Your spouse. The same person you fell in love with, yes. as we said a minute ago, if you do what you did in the beginning, it will never end. Hallelujah. That same person is still there. That's the same person you're laying next to at every night. Allow God to heal. Let not the sun go down on your wrath. Yes. Come together in prayer and let God bring peace to your marital relationship and let God be glorified. Let God be true and all his enemies be scattered because they are liars in jesus mighty name father we thank you tonight we give you honor we give you glory and we give you great praise lord jesus we thank you lord god for lord god solidifying our relationship for giving us the mind of christ for it's with the mind that we serve you lord and so god on tonight we pray for these your blessed people those lord god that are dealing with frustrations those that are dealing with disappointment those that are dealing lord god with things that are trying to bring separation to their marital relationship god we plead and apply the blood of jesus upon these your blessed people now and we pray god that you will bring reconciliation that you will bring understanding that you will bring lord god forgiveness that you will bring love and compassion oh god in the mighty and immutable name of jesus christ upon those that are married tonight that they may bring you glory that they may bring your name praise uh, that they may bring you honor oh god and that the world may see their good works and glorify you hallelujah and say the same god that has brought them and solidified and fortified their relationship i want this god, my god, my god. move by your spirit tonight lord it's in the immutable name of Jesus. God, we bind the hand of the enemy. We curse, hallelujah, the attacks of the enemy that's coming upon your people. Those that are connected not just to arrows of deliverance and faith, but those that will listen to us, Lord God, that are not connected to us, but that are connected to you. Lord God, we curse the attack of the enemy at the root and at the seed. And we loose speak, decree, and declare healing and blessings even right now. Yes, Lord. And it's in Jesus' mighty name Jesus. that we pray. And we decree that it is so in jesus mighty name god bless you tonight beloved we want you to come back on next tuesday hallelujah we're going to pick it back up we're going deep for the two becoming one and we want your marriage to glorify god it we want you hallelujah it shall amen first lady it shall, it shall glorify god this is my wife hallelujah and my best friend and that person that you're looking at right now you might be holding their hand i want you to look at them and let them know you are my best friend and i love you in jesus mighty name we want you to come back hallelujah on thursday morning with my very lovely wife as she leads us to the throne of grace as she always does so eloquently and poignantly every thursday morning at 7 a.m as we seek god in this year of excellence and elevation i want you to know that god is getting ready to prefer you he's not just getting ready to prefer your marriage he's getting ready to elevate every single aspect of your life if you believe it hallelujah i want you to put it in the comment section right now and say god i thank you for bringing hallelujah excellence and elevation to my life then we want you to come back hallelujah on monday every monday night we've been in a provocative and very powerful subject and the subject has been psychological warfare on our zoom bible class and that's 8 p.m every monday Such night Such oh, amen i want you to come back on march 18th at 7 p.m that's march 18th at 7 p.m the village hallelujah will be back in session yes. and we are going to be talking from the subject loving not the world Woo, my god we need to understand if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him oh and we're coming from first john chapter number two and verse 16 read it in your leisure so that you can be ready to hear what thus saith the lord on march 18th at 7 p.m first lady won't you let them know what we want them to do in this year of excellence and elevation in the rest of 2022 
as our pastor always say Glory to God. faith be bigger than your fear bigger than your fear drop that in the comment section my faith shall be bigger than my fear bigger than my fear and as we always say here at arrows of deliverance and yes. faith ministries i am i am you are you are because he is because he is in jesus name in jesus name see you next time god bless you god bless you